Hey everyone, welcome to the sideboard of the Columbus Open Weekend, part of season one of the SCG Tour, brought to you by the awesome people over at Ultimate Guard. I am Cedric Phillips, and I am joined by a member of Team Nex Ridge Nexus. Correct. It is Brendan DeCandio, otherwise known as, I know you never get this, Andrew Garfield or Spider-Man, never, right? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, it's been a long time, actually. I had a feeling, I had a feeling. Yes. So, you're a Florida guy? Yes. You came all the way up here for this? Because I imagine drive. your long drive? <laughs> yes. You drove? Yes, we did. It was a thousand miles, and I was wanting to play this deck so much. So, How long is the drive? 15 hours Oh, or so. my goodness. Well, you're having a good tournament, right? So far, so good. Seven and one. Today. Okay, so the drive thus far has been worth it. Yes. Which is a very, very good thing. And you have a pretty innovative deck here this weekend. So let's talk about the bannings. Right. We had Smuggler's Copter, Ember Cool, Reflector Mage, gone. Uh, at that time, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> At that time, you know, Black Green Delirium was still a really good deck. Yeah. It's I, a deck you've yeah. had success with, right? Yeah, at the Invitational, I won the Open there. That was on the weekend of the day. I won that with the uh, okay. Delirium deck, so. So, it's a deck you've played, you have success with. Right. All that good stuff. But now, with the Bannings and Emrakul being gone, people are thinking, okay, Delirium's probably not that good. You say, nay, this deck is good. Tell me why. Kind of. It's kind of good. It's not, in essence, the same exact deck. You can't grind very early. Uh, and just build up this massive end game where you just Emrakul them and wreck you know, everyone's day. Everyone knows how Emrakul works. Okay. Uh, so we kind of have to be a little more aggressive now, uh, taking advantage of the Delirium creatures. Okay. Uh, is what I'm doing in this deck. So So we'll start with Grimflare. It was good in the previous Delirium decks, and yes. you're playing it still here, so it's still good? It's still good. Uh, it helps in a different way that uh, Grimflare didn't before, which was not just uh, filtering your draws and like finding you the uh, Delirium count. Uh, to go up to Emrakul to make it cheaper, okay. but you have it just to make sure you don't flood it as well. It just you know that element was never really something you wanted in Delirium because you had so many expensive things to do. Okay. But without those expensive things, you want it to kind of filter your draws and make sure you don't screw it a lot of ways. But yeah, still very good. Uh, another old card, Mind Wreck Demon. Mind Wreck Demon. Yes. You have a lot of those in your deck this weekend. Four. Still good. Even better. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, Mind Wreck Demon fell prey to the fact that we are living in a Reflector Mage world, and if you guys don't know how that works, not very well for the person playing Mind Wreck Demon. Very true, very true. But uh, without that, the biggest creatures people are playing are like Heart of Kirins, Gideons, Avacins, and things like that. Trenchal Gearhook, of course, and nope. a little 1 4 we all come familiar with. But <laughs> uh, Mind Wreck Demon, no, it pressures very, very well, and also flipping cards over is great. It works, you know, it fits the aggressive theme of what we're trying to do, also. So I'm a big fan, playing four of it. It's been great so far. Okay. So. Uh, Gear Hockey is kind of a new ish edition, would you say? Similar to Mind Wreck Demon, yeah. It suffered from the similar problems that Reflector Mage did, uh, Reflector Mage caused for the decks, where you build up this giant threat or you put them over multiple creatures and it gets Reflector Mage and you lost that value. But uh, you also didn't need this kind of thing when you were playing the old Delirium deck because you had the end game of Emrakul. Okay. And Ish cannot abide the time. And this doesn't buy time at all, but it does just kill your opponent. Which I'm always in favor of. Me too. I want to get my opponent dead. <laughs> now, those are the old cards. Those are the boring cards. Let's talk about the new cards. Right. I'm going to start with Winding Constrictor. Right. Black Green, 2 3. Yes. It has some weird text that lets it put more counters on things. But, weird. you know, what's going on with this? Why is this in your deck? So a lot of people experimented with Winding Constrictor decks uh, using Nissa, the three mana Nissa. Okay. But I'm actually not playing any of those because I don't feel like it's aggressive enough. Okay. I don't want a card that I just have to throw away uh, to make all my things really big. I don't think it's really good next with one drop creatures. Okay. But I'm not playing any. But Constrictor works pretty well with another card I'm fairly certain is the best card in the set or rare in the set at least. Uh, this one here. The okay, Walking hold Ballista. On. You think that Walking Bliss is the best rare in the set? Yeah. Best rare mythic, probably best card. All right. You you got to sell us on this now. Okay. Um, Despite its, you know, obvious interaction with Walking Constrictor, uh, we've, like I said, come familiar with the specific 1-4 that, you know, is not part of an infinite combo. Uh, yes, the Healy Ride. Walking Bliss, so while it's in play, just stops that combo. Because okay. at some point, that Healy Ride is going to be on one loyalty. Yep. So, in any case, how many, how many counters are on your Ballista, you can just remove one, ping them, and kill this Healy Ride, so it stops it. So it's a really good insurance policy against them. Also, this deck desperately wanted earlier ways to interact. You have Grasp of Darkness, but it's usually not enough. Okay. Without, Ishkana being, you know, buying you time to a big threat like that, which you don't have that anymore. You want a card that you can use early and play early and trade early. Being an artifact creature is insane as well for Delirium, by the way. Sure, that makes total sense. Okay. Don't have to mess around with Pilgrims or anything like that, but... <laughs> yeah, no, those days are over. Yeah, killing cards like the, what was it, the Toolcraft Exemplar, Veteran Motorist, the, like some of the rest of red-white creatures. Okay. Really good, because playing against a couple of humans decks so far. Uh, but no, just... While it's in play as well, you with Winding Constrictor, just paying four mana, getting two counters is so much more of a big deal than, like, one counter. Just. We watched that a little bit. Caleb really? Shear. We watched Caleb Shear. He's playing okay, some cool. deck to you. And yeah, he was doing that as well. Just, you know, it was it's relevant and also you get to deal the more damage when you sacrifice it. Right, right. So this actually was a pretty good interaction in combination with Lion Constrictor. Now talk to me about Rishkar, Pima Renegade, a card that I think some people would have expected <laughs> to be maybe the card you were talking about as the best card in the set. Mm. It's a card a lot of people like. 
I think it's the second best one. Okay. I, I was talking about this earlier this week. Uh, those two cards, especially in tandem with each other, are obviously very synergistic. They all do with counters. You can go overboard on it, but uh, this card, I mean, I just had a match last game where I went turn two, Wadney Constrictor, turn three, Rishkar, and that's just eight power on turn three and I'm attacking you. Yeah, like, those are the starts that people were kind of afraid of. If you get those yeah, starts, that's a that's, good start. That's part of what this deck can do, but it doesn't okay. have to do it. Okay. But uh, no, Rishkar, I think we've only been to see what kind of decks it can go into. I'm interested to play in other formats too, potentially. Okay. It might not be as powerful, but I like the card a lot. It's an elf. I like elves. You've got removal spells and fatal push to the slaughter, ruinous path. It's different from the days of Grasp of Darkness and some well, other things that you were doing. Still have Grasp of Darkness, okay. but uh, yeah, we different. Uh, fatal push, while being very good and very efficient, uh, doesn't kill the Thunderguard Guardian without um, some way to trigger revolt. Which sure. You don't want to fill your deck with too many tap lands like Evolving Wilds, because then you just become this slow, clunkyish deck. We have a couple, but uh, Grasp is still king, I think, in that regard, just uh, making sure you can kill anything you want to. Kills Avacyn, kills Gear Hulk, kills a lot of things. There's been an uptick into the slaughter. Uh, you know, we're yes. through about eight rounds of coverage, and we've seen more of the main deck mm -hmm. this weekend than we ever saw in the previous format, <laughs> and it looks like you're a fan as well. I added one last minute to the main deck. I had a couple of five minutes in the deck. I went in favor of more Gear Hulks, just all of them. But to the slaughter is uh, great because you guys seen the Jeskai control deck, the Jeskai like, combo deck, of a bunch, course. a bunch. Yep. So the problem with playing against that deck is often you can't tap out a lot because you have to leave up some kind of removal spell. Okay. Well, Grasp isn't great because they can just play, you know, Sahili Rai and then next turn play the Koei and then have like man up to counter your things. So sure. Tool Slaughter kind of enters uh, in Planeswalkers at instant speed and isn't too bad against Trenchal Gearhulk or Grasp is. Okay. So yeah, just instant ways to deal with Planeswalkers have never been, you know, more sought after than this format, I don't believe. And your Sorcerer Speed way of dealing with Planeswalkers, yeah, Ruinous really. Path, couple copies, still okay? Yeah, yeah still good. No, still need to kill Gideon, and still kills a giant creature if you need to. Okay, we take a look at the sideboard here. This yep. is where things, obviously the main deck's a little unorthodox, mm -hmm. and he's having a fantastic tournament so far, so it might not be as unorthodox. <laughs> but when you think of Black Green Delirium, you think of Ishkana. Yes. This was the thing that kind of bridged the gap to getting Emrakul. Emrakul's no longer here, <laughs> and you have one ish kind of throughout your 75, I imagine, to traverse for, but mm -hmm. talk to us about why this just isn't where you want to be anymore. There's nothing to build towards. There's okay. no there's no inevitable endgame you always wanted when you had uh, Emrakul. It's just not there anymore. And I tried it with, with Gear Hulk, and it's too many fives. I tried one in the main deck. It was awkward at times. It's just not what I want to be doing right now. There's no deck that I'm like, yes, I slammed this Ishkana, and I'm good. Like, Blue-White isn't as big of a deck we've seen. But, yeah, it's, it's really trended down. But Ballista, just walking back to that card, helps shore up the early game so much that I think that you don't even need that card anymore. Okay. It's 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 just it's a drastic change from it is. four weeks ago. Ishkana oh, was, like, problem number one for everyone. Mm -hmm. And you had to play really bad counter spells to be able to beat it. Yeah. I can't think of the counter spell. It can't counter Revolutionary artifact. Rebuff. Yeah, that thing. Yep. A horrible card. But people were playing it to be able to beat this thing. Yes. So... Not going to see a lot more of that. Not just Gearhawk you've got in your, in your sideboard. You've got Omnixilis, Anissa Vital Force. Just some pretty powerful one ups Have those been yeah. okay for you? Yeah, they've come in a couple times. Uh, Nissa sometimes can be good at killing Sealy Rise people play early, just like without a board. It doesn't look like I can kill it, but you just okay. jam Nissa and kill her thing. Okay. Uh, haven't bring it, I brought Omnixilis in. It's a little bit weirder playing against the Jeskai combo decks now because you can't really tap out too much unless you're putting direct pressure on their life total. Okay. So if I could go back, I probably wouldn't have the Omnixilis on the sideboard, even though I do love the card. I played one previous from at main deck even. Okay. Uh, but no, they're good. They're definitely good. Nissa's pretty great uh, just at killing Sealy Rise. So. Uh, last but not least, we definitely have a Lost Legacy. Three of them. We have three Lost Legacy, yeah. excuse me. <laughs> I'll let you start there. Yes. What's the deal with this? I don't want to get comboed. I mean, I played against Jacob Bog a couple rounds ago, and he tried leaving up the gate for a couple turns, but I just went, you know, turn two, Constrictor, turn three, Pima, and he has to tap out at some point to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And play Lost Legacy here, Felder Guardians, to playing the, more the, what Noah Walker was playing just recently. Oh, sure, like this four-color version, yeah, okay. Yeah. But no, it just, at that point, you don't have to worry about anything, so you can just tap out three big things every turn, and usually people can't keep up. Okay. I haven't and found many other applications for it. Uh, Paradoxal Outcome is my one loss today, and I didn't draw it against there. It can, the the four mana return thing. Oh, I know what it does. I'm one. just making sure this can get it. Yeah, That's it's all. not an artifact, okay. so we're good. All right, we're clear. But yeah, no, it's it's uh, a card I was a little bit skeptical about playing last format for Emrakul, uh, but here it's great. I mean, I've tested with a bunch of Marvel decks too, and sometimes you need to make sure you don't get Ulamog. It's a little hard to beat that card sometimes. It's always okay. been the bane of my existence, but no, it's been pretty good so far. Brought in a bunch. Last card. Yep. Any's expertise. This is a card I've seen mostly in sideboards here this weekend. Mm -hmm. It's obviously going to be pretty good against aggressive strategies. Give other creatures minus three, minus three. I assume most of your creatures are going to survive past that. Typically. You get to play a free spell. Has this been okay for you this weekend? Has it come <laughs> up at all? My first two matches were against Redbud Human, so yeah. Fair it enough. It was really good. Uh, Adam Yurchik <laughs> was not very happy. But, okay. that's, but yes, uh, no, it's great. I don't think it's a great main deck card. It definitely 
didn't catch my eye at the beginning of the spoiler season because we still had Copter to deal with. Sure. But with no Smuggler's Copter, I think this card is actually very good. Main deck, obviously, not great, but in the sideboard, it's a fantastic card, and I'm glad I'm playing three. So, so the question I'm going to ask you a couple here. Yes. What do you want to play against with this deck? Not, is there any matchup where it's like, yes, I'm um, so happy I got paired against this? Red by Human seemed very good. I didn't get to test it against it too much, but uh, that seems great. Um, I don't know, you're the rock. You're good against most things, you know? Sure. So, uh, no, there's only a matchup I really don't want to play against, maybe, is the Colossus deck. I didn't okay. get to, I don't have, just, like, I don't have Transgress on my sideboard. I want to just load up on ways to deal with uh, the combo in Lost Legacy. So, Colossus can definitely get you, but everything else seems pretty good. Just, you know, play your creatures early, attack them for a bunch, put counters on your thing, shoot them, who knows. Um, anything you would change about this moving forward? Anything that really stand out to you, like, ah, this was a glaring oversight, or, you know, I didn't expect this deck. You talked about the Colossus deck a little bit. There's some representation of it. Mm -hmm. I actually think it's a bad matchup for a decent amount of people here this yeah, weekend. Yeah. But anything that really stands out to you is something that, for players who are looking to play this deck, something to move forward with. Uh, I probably wouldn't play the Abnixilis on the sideboard, but okay. I haven't seen enough of the format to know. Uh, we're still week one here, of course. Of course. Maybe more in Richmond, we'll find out. But uh, no, it's in theory, it was good against control, but it's not when they have the combo. So if you can get rid of the combo, it's really good. But uh, before then, it's something you really don't want to tap out for. It doesn't kill them. All right, before we close her down, any shout outs you want? You can say your Twitter name, your Twitch, anything. You've got uh, 15 seconds. Take advantage of it. BDCandio7, my first initial, last name uh, on Twitch, Twitter, same thing all there. Okay. I'd stream most. Most every night I'm not here for starting game events, so. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's about it. Thanks to everyone at X Energy. There you go. You know? I gotta help them every time. They're wearing shirts with things ah, on them. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't look down very often. So <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, for Brennan, <laughs> I'm Cedric. Yes. I think coming in for a deck tech. Uh, you hopefully, you guys are into Delirium because we got a new version of it that can kill people pretty quickly here, and hopefully, we'll see him on camera. Stay tuned for more here from the Columbus Open Weekend.